All right, good morning, and thank you all for being here. Uh, what a great turnout that we have this morning. With me today is our city attorney, Jan Goldsmith, our assistant police chief, Cesar Solis, our district attorney, Bonnie DeManis, Commander Mike Barletta from the County of San Diego Sheriff's Department, and Autumn Burris, who is a survivor of human trafficking and helps other victims become survivors. She'll be wrapping up this morning's program, and I hope that you'll listen to her story. I'd also like to recognize the commissioners of the City of San Diego's Human Relations Commission. Uh, joining us this morning are Susan Thompson, uh, Susan Thompson Churn, uh, Tiffany Harrison, Joyce Abrams, Mitz Lee, Monica Bauer, and Pat Washington, and of course our ex exceptional executive director, Danelle Scarborough. We have a large number of community leaders joining us this morning, uh, as well as a representative from Congressman Juan Vargas's office. Thank you all for being with us this morning. Yesterday, the City of San Diego's Human Relations Commission launched a campaign to raise awareness in changes to the California State Senate Bill 1193 regarding human trafficking laws. Senate Bill 1193 requires certain businesses to post a flyer, such as this one here, with relevant phone numbers that victims of human trafficking or someone who knows a victim of human trafficking can contact. Businesses that are affected by this change in law are bars, adult and sexually oriented businesses, massage and bodywork establishments, airports, inner city passenger rail and light rail stations, bus stations, truck stops, roadside rest areas, hospital emergency rooms, urgent care centers, farm labor contractors, and job recruitment centers. A letter is being mailed out to all of these businesses to alert them to the change in law and the need for them to participate in this anti-trafficking effort. Enclosed with that letter is a smaller version of the poster that you see here this morning. This poster must be placed in a visible area uh, where all employees as well as the public can see it when entering the business. Ladies and gentlemen, human trafficking is a $32 billion a year industry, rivaling drug trafficking and illegal arms sales. Human trafficking includes being forced to engage in activities such as commercial sex, home, uh, housework, farm work, construction or factory, retail or restaurant work in which the victim cannot leave the situation. Human trafficking, in effect modern day slavery, is often difficult to detect. The FBI has identified California as one of the nation's top four states for trafficked persons. The number of cases prosecuted under state, tra state sex trafficking statutes has more than tripled in the past four years in San Diego County. The victims of human trafficking are often young girls and women. Young girls and women make up 55% of the forced labor uh, victims and 98% of sex trafficking victims. Studies have shown that in other states where posting such requirements have been enacted, there have been increases in the number of reported trafficking situations and victims who have been rescued. This campaign and by working together with law enforcement agencies will aid in getting victims the support that they need and will result in the prosecution of the individuals committing these crimes. I'd now like to ask our district attorney, Bonnie DeManis, to share some remarks. Bonnie? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> and thanks for taking all my talking points. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, really, I, first I want to say a big shout out to Autumn for coming forward, for the courage um, that it takes uh, to talk about this experience. And I want to thank uh, the city's Human Relations Commission for taking the lead on this important uh, issue with uh, making sure posters are available. It's a pleasure working with them. As always, San Diego is collaborative with law enforcement, with the community, and with all the providers that are in involved. The number of cases that our office has prosecuted under sex trafficking has more than tripled over the past four years. It's clear that this scourge is on the rise. And believe me, it's happening in neighborhoods across San Diego. One of the biggest trends we're seeing is the involvement of gangs. Increasingly, they're engaging in human trafficking as a money-making operation. We've even seen rival gangs cooperating to make money to replace their drug dealing efforts. Labor trafficking is also human trafficking too, of course. Agriculture, food service, and other workers are being forced to work against their will or to pay off a debt. Law enforcement recognized these trends a long time ago. We've been working on it, and the public is now becoming aware of it, and this is part of that effort.
At the district attorney's office, we've been we've seen and been active in increased support for victims. We've worked with school districts to help teachers recognize victims. And we have an entire division that's responsible for handling these sensitive cases. These posters are another weapon in our arsenal to fight human trafficking. They're a potential lifeline for victims who don't know where to turn, and they are the law. You're going to see the posters, well, you do see them, but you're going to see them popping up at businesses across the city. If you're a victim or you know someone who is being forced into what amounts to slavery, I encourage you to call the number on the poster. Knowledge is power. This new law provides the knowledge and the power for victims and witnesses in our community to get help. It's important we tackle this problem together. Law enforcement is here to help and to, we're just a phone call away. We want to save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie, and thank you for being a wonderful partner with the city and helping to keep our neighborhood safe. Also critical in that effort is our city attorney who is with us here this morning. Uh, I'd like to ask Jan Goldsmith uh, to give us a few remarks. Jan? Thank you very much. Um, I have a few um, comments about the legislation. SB 1193 was adopted in 2012. It passed the State Assembly uh, without a no vote, un unanimous, 74 to 0. It had bipartisan support. And it passed the Senate 31 to 4. Now, this obviously bipartisan support, and, and the law does require that a smaller version, not, not that big version, be posted in certain businesses. And yes, it is somewhat of a, of, it's an impact, it's a, it's a mandate on businesses. But there's good reason for it, and that was discussed in the legislature and the reason for such widespread support among our elected representatives in Sacramento. This is a crime. It may be an industry, but it is a serious, serious crime. But it's not the kind of crime where you watch the perpetrator walk into the store with a gun and hold somebody up. It's a crime that's under the surface. It's a crime that we don't see every day. It's a crime where we might walk into a, an establishment and there may be somebody who's a victim there who is afraid to speak out, who is in fear, and we can't see what the crime uh, is that's being perpetrated. It's a lot like terrorism in that we ask passengers in airports to report unattended baggage and packages because we need help. It's the same thing. Part of the reason, and one of the reasons why this bill had bipartisan strong support is that we need help to enforce the law and to protect these victims. We need an alert public to report when they see things or they hear things that might give rise to this crime being perpetrated. We need victims to be empowered to know who to call for help. We are on the border in San Diego. Texas, of course, is also on the border. This law is based upon a law that was adopted in Texas in 2007. And from 2007, so we, we, they have the notices that are posted. From 2007 to 2011, those four years, of all the reports that came to law enforcement about human trafficking, that they could determine who it was. It wasn't anonymous. 20% of those reports came from people who cited that they saw the information up on the wall. So it does have a positive impact. And if we can protect victims, if we can enforce the law, but also deter uh, the violation of the law, this will be a success. Law enforcement can't do it alone. The purpose of this law is to create a partnership to convince the public that we need their help and there's a good cause here and that's the purpose of the law and that's why we're all here today is to try to educate the public that we're in this together this is like terrorism we need to be alert and we need to report uh, uh, crimes when we see it and potential victims when we think that's happening thank you thank you Jan and thank you for all your good work uh, on behalf of the city uh, next up we have uh, our assistant police chief uh, Cesar Solis uh, who to share some remarks as well chief Thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, on behalf of Chief William Lansdowne, thank you to all of you for joining us here today and getting out this very important message. Human trafficking is something that can happen anywhere. This initiative, this campaign to require certain businesses and establishments to post essential information on how to report suspected human trafficking is an important step in combating modern day slavery. It will also provide critical information for anyone who may know someone who is being forced to engage in any activity and cannot leave, whether it's for sexual exploitation, commercial sex, or other forms of human trafficking. Earlier this month, the San Diego Police Department, in partnership with the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office and other law enforcement agencies, served warrants on 24 gang members and associates that were involved in sex trafficking of underage girls and women. 22 of these suspects have been arrested and are currently in federal custody. This operation began one year ago with the arrest of one person for pimping and quickly expanded to a large scale operation that, uh, that documented illegal activity in 46 cities across 23, uh, 23 states. Females were, lured into, were lured into prostitution with promises of a lavish lifestyle or they were forced through acts of violence. They were recruited through social media, friends, schools, or ver various locations like the neighborhood mall. Gang members branded their prostitutes as if they were property with tattoos, barcodes, or names. Girls and women were sold, traded, and gifted to other gang members who worked together akin to a crime family to generate money. Due to the investigative efforts of all that were involved, girls and women were rescued from a life they were being forced into. All of the 60 female sex trafficking, sex trafficking victims, including 11 minors, were offered resources to help them start a new life. This recent investigation illustrates victims of slavery and human trafficking is a very real problem impacting our community. We are committed to eliminating this type of criminal behavior. I'd like to commend each businesses that will place this poster in their establishment as a positive step forward in preventing this crime. Collectively, we can and will make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Solis. And thank you, Commander Barletta, for being here today. Uh, finally, this morning, we uh, have uh, uh, Autumn Burris is here. Uh, she herself is a victim of human trafficking, and as I mentioned before, works with other victims to help make them survivors. And she'll uh, share a few comments. Autumn. Good morning. Thank you all for being here and thank you for the city of uh, San Diego for um, making sure that we have a, a vehicle for um, victims to become survivors by um, calling the hotline and, um, and getting themselves off the street. It's this awareness piece that we're still in that is so critical to the, to the woman, child, man, boy, labor, sex, trafficking individual on the street tonight or working in the agricultural fields or over the internet or wherever they might be exploited. So SB 1193 is, in, is critical. As you can see, this poster will give them um, and, and give the community a, a place to call and to start to get that help so that they can begin to survive and thrive. I stand here for all the women, largely women, that can't stand here. When I got out over 15 years ago, there wasn't the mechanisms in place such as these posters. And it was hard and there was stigma attached to um, being sexually exploited. What I ask for you individually and collectively is to erase that stigma. Understand that nobody is involved in prostitution, stripping, sex trafficking, labor trafficking because they have any other viable option. And to further put that to you, I would say um, that prostitution itself is a violation of human rights. So we need to reframe the way that we think about these things. I'm not here to lecture to you about this. I'm here to ask you to take a look at what's really going on holistically in all of these uh, places where these posters will be. I also want to reach out to the community and say I don't think anybody's going to get in trouble for calling this number if it's a mistake. It's better to be safe than sorry. Ring up the line, let them know what you saw, and let them figure out if it's a bona fide 
um, case that they're going to go forward on. Because as one of the officers mentioned, we need the eyes and ears of the community. We need to reduce the stigma so that other survivors can stand where I'm standing today and deliver the message. Thank you. And a round of applause for, for uh, Autumn. I think that was very powerful. Thank you so much, Autumn. You know, it's our hope that by putting a real face and, and a name to human trafficking, others are going to have the courage that Autumn has to come forward, uh, to call this number, uh, to share their story, and put the bad guys behind bars. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is important work that's going on in our city, and we must continually strive uh, to protect our citizens, particularly our young people. I commend the efforts of our law enforcement agencies, our district attorney, our sheriff's department, our San Diego police department, our city attorney's office, all for coming together to help protect these victims. I also want to commend the work done by our Human Relations Commission, and in particular, I want to note uh, the exceptional service of two of our commissioners, Susan uh, Thompson Churn and Tiffany Harrison, who have spearheaded this campaign. Ladies, thank you very much for your leadership on this issue. My thanks to everyone for being here today. I'm grateful for your continued commitment and dedication to making San Diego not just America's finest city, but that San Diego is truly a great city. And at this point, we're happy to take any questions uh, that anyone may have. Oh. No, uh, the, the state uh, bill prescribes the particular businesses that they need to be in. Those are the ones I mentioned uh, before. But there are bars, adults, and sexually oriented businesses, massage and bodywork establishments, airports, uh, rail stations, truck stops, bus stations, rest areas, emergency rooms, urgent care centers, farm labor contractors, and job recruitment centers. So they're very specifically defined in the legislation. And I want to thank Congressman Vargas for his good work in getting this legislation enacted. Any other questions? I don't know. Does anyone know the answer to that question? I believe we're one of the first. I think Al Almeda County uh, has begun, but it's taken a while for everybody to get hold of this and get the artwork. Uh, but everybody's working uh, diligently, and we are one of the first. I will tell you that. Um, Law enforcement will typically agree that as you get more proximity to the border, it is there is more at risk and more danger. That's why Texas tried this first as a border state. San Diego being on the border, we are at risk and we need to be particularly um, uh, alert and and work on. The, and that's one of the reasons why we're coming for, forth first. Is it hard to come up with actual numbers? It, it, well. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like saying how many, how many terrorists are there in, in California. Uh, we know we're at risk. Uh, we also know that, that we need to find more information. This is one way to help us. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Danelle. Danelle Scarborough, our executive director, or, or Bonnie Nemanis. There are two numbers on the poster. One is a national poster. It's a national hotline staffed by a project called Polaris Project. I would also recommend them as a, a site for statistics across the country. The second is a California-based number. Both of these have been selected because of the training they have, because of the connections they have with local resources. So they're full-time, 24-hour, confidential, all the languages, and they're staffed, and um, then they they're also able to provide us the statistics in the long run. And that was Danelle Scarborough, who's the executive director of our City of San Diego's Human Relations Commission. We'll take one more question, and then we have um, a number of our Human Relations Commissioners. We also have um, Marissa Ugarte with the Bilateral Safety Corridor Coalition, who's also been really active in this issue, and I know that she's an expert. So maybe one more question. Yes, sir. I believe. Bonnie, you want to take that? It is an issue on both sides. As I mentioned, gangs, rival gangs, have been joining together to uh, try and recruit young girls from our high schools. But as we've seen uh, with the U.S. Attorney's recent uh, indictment, they the gangs travel, and there's now all across the nation there are 
places where this is happening. I think why we're excited about the poster is because it brings the awareness level up. And one of the problems that law enforcement has had is in how to identify who's a victim of human trafficking or sexual exploitation. And so it's also now saying to the public, we want you to be on the lookout and help us to determine who they are. And by the way, the, the uh, posters are in two languages and some three uh, by the statute, Spanish and in English. And I, I think in San Diego, we're going to have uh, either Mandarin or Tagalog uh, as well. So we're, we're going to use those kind of posters to get the word out. Just to follow, about 400 businesses received the notice from the city of San Diego yesterday, so that gives you a sense. Uh, guys, that's the end of our time here today. We're happy to take one-on-ones. Again, thank you for being here. We're trying to build awareness. We're trying to end human trafficking and sex trafficking in the city, and so your being here helps us get that word out. I deeply appreciate it. And again, I want to thank our Human Relations Commission, our law enforcement partners, and everyone being here today. It's a collaborative effort. This is completely the San Diego spirit of how we tackle public safety. We work together, uh, and I appreciate everyone being here today. Have a good afternoon.